Tonight on Hotty Toddy News, a second group has asked the Chancellor to mandate the vaccine for students and faculty. We'll take a look where the mandate stands. Curbside recycling is coming back to Oxford next month. We'll tell you what you need to know ahead of its return. And the university once again secured a spot on the list of best colleges and universities in America. We'll tell you why it ranked where it did. Hotty Toddy News starts now. From the School of Journalism and New Media on the campus of the University of Mississippi, this is Hotty Toddy News. Good evening and welcome to Hotty Toddy News. I'm Caroline Helms. September is Suicide Prevention Month. Over the course of the pandemic, suicide rates have increased nationwide. Ryan Hillis caught up with members of the community to see how the pandemic is impacting their mental health. Since the pandemic started, suicide cases have risen by over 14%, according to John Hopkins Hospital, one of the clear signs that mental health is in decline. Not having that physical interaction with others and be able to see them in person and see them in class definitely took a down toll on my mental health. Which makes this year's Suicide Prevention Month even more important. And TikTok accounts such as the Are You Happy account with more than 3 million followers are bringing awareness to this issue by asking one simple question. Are you happy? And we decided to join in on the trend. Yes. I think so, yeah. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> you know, I get stressed out about some things, but in general, I'm happy. I have a good life. However, if you are struggling with suicidal thoughts or other emotional issues such as eating disorders and stress, the Ole Miss Counseling Center offers many ways you can find help. We offer group therapy, individual therapy, consultations, and then triage services. There are many outreach programs that you can go to to receive counseling here in the Oxford community, including right here on campus at Lester Hall on the second and third floor, and here at CommuniCare located off of Highway 7. Both locations also offer a hotline for those struggling with their mental health. This is Ryland Hillis, Hotty Toddy News. For more information on these programs, you can go to CommuniCare.com or counseling.olemiss.edu. Turning to our coronavirus coverage, yesterday the Mississippi State Department of Health reported nearly 2,500 new COVID cases and 39 new deaths. The city of Oxford reported 50 new cases in the county yesterday. Mississippi is still the least vaccinated state in the country, but those rates are going up. In Lafayette County, 53% of the population has at least one dose and 48% of the population is fully vaccinated. Last night, the ASB Senate passed the Mississippi Faculty Senate's resolution to administer a campus-wide vaccination mandate in a 26 to 18 vote. The resolution will go to the Office of the Dean of Students, Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs, and Chancellor Glenn Boyce. ASB expects a response from the Office of Chan the Chancellor within the coming days. Vaccines aren't the only way officials are trying to keep the Oxford community healthy. Curbside recycling is back in action for the first time in two years. Sarah Brooks Adams speaks with the city coordinators on their plans to starting up back up this October. After two years of no curbside recycling, the city of Oxford is bringing this service back on October 4th. Oxford's recycling coordinator, Michelle Robinson, says the city paused curbside pickup in 2019. We um, decided to put a stop to curbside, to suspend it for a little while during COVID uh, just because of budget cuts and um, really we couldn't find any suppliers to pick it up either. Robinson says that Oxford budget has increased in recent months, which allows for curbside pickup to resume. Residents who live within the city limits can pick up bins from the Oxford Environmental Services for just $17.50, or they can use their own bins as long as they have recycling stickers on them. We take aluminum cans, steel cans, those can be in one bin together, and paper and cardboard in the other. If you have large cardboard, we do ask that you break it down and take all the styrofoam and everything out of it. Oxford Recycling will be picked up curbside once a week, and then it is off to the Oxford Lafayette Landfill, where Supervisor John Corals will process the recycling. Curbside, they'll come in as well, just like the rest of the vehicles do. They'll come up on the scale, uh, we all love them in, and they'll make the loop and go around to the recycling center. It's as easy as separating your plastics from your aluminums. Visit Oxford's recycling website to figure out what day your district offers curbside pickup. This is Sarah Brooks Adams with Hotty Toddy News. While the University of Mississippi prides itself on keeping campus clean and green, it's also proud of improving its ranking in the U.S. news list of top universities, especially after being recognized for its work with student veterans for the first time. Chloe Baker has more on how the university improved its rank. 
Ole Miss has once again been recognized as one of U.S. News and World Report's best colleges for 2022, this time jumping 10 spots. Assistant to the Chancellor, William Knipe, says this is a testament to the outstanding faculty, staff, and students at the university. Jumping 10, spot, 10 spots is um, something that's not normal, but it's something that we're not shocked by. We know how good we are and we're excited to be recognized in this way. Ole Miss also received recognition as the top program in the state for its support of student military veterans. The Office of Veteran Military Services takes care of all military-connected students across all regional campuses. Assistant Director for Veteran and Military Services, Andrew Newby, says the department works to ensure that their students find their place in college. Uh, we really work to advocate for the student um, in terms of navigating the VA, um, navigating college life and that kind of stuff. So. The George Street House here on campus is a one-stop shop for anyone with military ties to receive any kind of help they may need, whether it's for class help or a support group. It's even a good place to just chill. Ole Miss has also implemented a veterans treatment team that provides students with various health services. The beauty of that is that now we don't have students having to drive down to Jackson to a VA appointment uh, and miss class or find more child care and things like that when they can just get it done here on campus. This idea started at Ole Miss and was recognized as the best practice by the Association of Higher Education and Disability in 2018. Now it's being adopted in other places. Chloe Baker, Hotty Toddy News. The university tied with Alabama for ninth in the SEC and ranked highest in the state of Mississippi. Here on the campus of the 67th Public School, the Study Abroad office is holding their International Education Week. The event hopes to highlight the university's global community and education abroad. Assistant of the Study Abroad Office, Brad Knoll, is hopeful that this week will spark conversation about more than just studying abroad. It's also kind of interculturalization, so being able to interact with international students that are here from various countries um, through means of refreshments and uh, just, you know, uh, conversation. The Study Abroad Office will be set up every day from 10 to 2 this week. International Education Week isn't the only exciting thing happening here. The Ole Miss volleyball team is off to a great start to their season, and so far they are undefeated for the first time since 2007. Anna Tate has more on how the team's season is going so far. After a brutal COVID spring season, the Ole Miss volleyball team is off to a hot start. Head coach Caleb Banworth says they are gearing up for a test field tournament in Indiana this weekend. Weekend, another good challenge for us um, leading into SEC play um, next Wednesday against Auburn. So, After hiring a new coaching staff last fall, the volleyball team lost every game in the All-SEC spring season, but new faces on the court are changing this theme, like Kaylee McLaughlin, who transferred from Maryland, and Florida transfer Riley Fisher. Um, so we brought in a lot of key pieces that are seeing the court this year and plugging them into our system, which we had another year to train, um, are two big factors to the turnaround. Middle blocker Peyton Bergach says that the team was going to work to flip the script this season. Um, starting day one, we all showed up in June. Um, and so we've been working really hard, kind of a different outlook, practice looks different, um, feels different. We're all, all a lot more um, fired up, kind of want to win. Um, this team is right where Bamworth wants them to be after defeating the top 15 Western Kentucky team. So we might even be a little bit ahead of where we, where I thought we would be at um, with this win over Western Kentucky. You can catch the Rebs back here in action at the Gillum Center as they host the Kentucky Wildcats for their home SEC opener. For Hotty Toddy News, I'm Anna Tate. Rebel Volleyball will be back in action tomorrow as they take on Chicago State in the Indiana Invitational at 4 p.m. That's all for tonight. Thank you for tuning in. For Hotty Toddy News, I'm Caroline Helms. We'll see you next week.